What's going on, folks? Texas plays Oklahoma here in the Red River rivalry here this Saturday. It's going to be an awesome game. Both teams are undefeated for the first time in a long time, and I'm so excited to see this game. A lot of great matchups in this game. We're going to break down some of the keys to, to a Texas victory in this game and see what Texas has to do to assure that they bring back that golden hat here to the University of Texas. But first off, folks, if you like the content that is coming your way on this channel, go like, comment, subscribe, and share. It helps me grow the channel a lot, means a lot. And also, folks, if you're hearing this on the streaming podcast platform, we're at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. Like, comment, subscribe, and share to that as well. Helps grow the channel a lot. But folks, what are the keys here for Texas to win this game against Oklahoma um, at the Cotton Bowl this weekend? I like Texas's matchups. Um, I think the Texas uh, defensive line is definitely going to be more physical against Oklahoma. Um, with their offensive line. Texas has been doing a great job of being just physical at the point of attack. One thing I will say about the Texas lines is that not only on the defensive line, but the offensive line has had the opportunity to gel um, and become one common unit. Uh, last year, we started two true freshmen on that offensive line. This year, those freshmen have grown up. Even though Cole Hudson is is hurt and he's not starting now because he's hurt, we have a guy named DJ Campbell who's a five-star recruit and the uh, most highly ranked prospect coming into the class last year. And so you have him now as, as a true sophomore. And you go left to right with a Kelvin Banks uh, Jr., who's arguably one of the top five, if not top three best tackles here in the country as a true sophomore. You also have on the left-hand side, you have uh, – Hayden Connor, who is a very savvy veteran guard, probably our best pass blocking uh, guard that we have here in the team. He's he's an outstanding asset with good feet as well. Very physical and very nasty at the point of attack. And then at the center, we have Jake Majors, uh, Mr. Reliable, who's been here for about seems like 80 years now. But Jake Majors, I think, if, if not mistaken, he is a redshirt junior. And then on the right side, DJ Campbell, uh, the uh, most highly ranked prospect that we had coming to the 20, uh, 2022 class. And then on the right tackle, who has been here also for about 80 years as well, and I'm just joking with that, Christian Jones, man, who has played outstanding. And the play that he has had over these last couple of years is probably going to solidify him as a draft pick and to be on somebody's roster here this year. Very excited to see what he has done here over those last couple of years with Cal Flood. Now, folks, I think the Texas uh, offensive line is going to be very physical. We're seeing what DJ Campbell can do uh, once he starts to get starters reps, uh, once he gets uh, settled into the, the uh, college game, once the speed of the game starts to slow down for him. Nasty player, folks. I'm telling you, he brings it 24-7. You got to love what you're seeing out of DJ Campbell. Same thing with Kelvin Banks Jr. You're seeing that the guys that Steve Sarkeesian and offensive coordinator and the uh, offensive line coach, Cal Flood, the guys that they're bringing in are big humans, big humans that are physical with great feet. Cal Flood loves those those kind of guys here for this offensive line. We call it the Flood Watch, right? Now, those guys have been blocking outstanding here this year, and Texas has been doing a great job, especially in the running game. They have been opening up holes here, here in the running game, especially last week against Kansas, where we rushed for – uh, north north of 300 yards last week. Jonathan Brooks had an amazing game with 20 carries, averaging uh, over 10 yards a carry with two explosive plays. I'm telling you, man, this offensive line is doing great things. Now that we talked about the offensive line, we're going to talk about those skill possessions next. And I tell you what, I love what Texas has at the running back position with Jonathan Brooks. And then to supplement that with a C.J. Baxter and also a Jaden Blue as well, Folks, we got some dogs in that room. Uh, Savion Red, another dog. Trey Wisner, a dog. Keelan Robinson, a dog. That running back room was something special. And I said in a couple videos prior to the season starting that I thought Jonathan Brooks was going to have a comparable season to what we saw last year out of B. John Robinson. And people kind of laugh. And I said it's not because I believe Jonathan Brooks is the skilled talent of a Bijan Robinson. We see what Bijan's doing on Sundays. That's why he was a top 10 pick in the draft. He's very special. He's making people look like they're on skates in the NFL. But what I will say is Jonathan Brooks is going to be playing behind a much better offensive line uh, here at Texas. But Jonathan Brooks is no slouch, folks. And people need to realize that. His vision, his balance, 
are unmatched. And I love what I'm seeing out of Jonathan Brooks in the open field. He has to wiggle. He's not going to try to outrun you. He is going to make life easier on himself. He's going to work smarter and not harder when he gets into the open field. And that's something that he has been doing outstanding this year. We always saw the glimpse last year and the year before last of Jonathan Brooks and just how he has the opportunity to be a great player here at Texas. And we're seeing that now. And I love seeing what we have out of him. Next, we got a true freshman, C.J. Baxter. C.J. Baxter is playing well also. Now, of course, he's not at the level of Jonathan Brooks yet because Jonathan Brooks has been here for three years. You are expected to be uh, a little bit ahead of a true freshman, of course, because you have matured your body into the college playing weight. The, the game has slowed down for you, and he has been playing he, meaning Jonathan Brooks, has been playing at a pretty high and productive level every time that he had an opportunity here at Texas. And you got to love it. Uh, he's just a great player. So I love what Texas brings to the to the uh, to the game when it comes to the running. Now, one thing I will say is what does Texas do when it comes down to the tight end position? We just saw that JT Sanders sustained an injury to. I think his ankle last week against Kansas. We'll find out more information about that on Thursday. But if he is good to go and if he is healthy, I'm telling you, folks, we're going to stretch the field. JT Sanders is a factor. Um, but if JT Sanders is not able to play in this game, it's going to be very interesting to see exactly what Steve Sarkeesian does at that second tight end position. But once JT Sanders left the game, Gunnar Helm moved to tight end one. And I didn't know if we were going to see more of the jumbo package with Agbo, um, who is the extra offensive lineman, playing at number eight as, as a third tight end in this offense, he moved up to, to tight end number two. I didn't know if it was going to be him or Juan Davis, but Steve Sarkeesian went with Agbo. And having Agbo there means that they want to play some bully ball and run the ball. So it's very interesting to see him out there. He's playing in a position very similar to what Andre Carrick played last year here at the University of Texas. But Agbo has great feet. Um, he was a lot heavier coming out of high school, but you see his body is trimmed down. He looks like a big tight end now. <laughs> he almost doesn't look like an offensive lineman. He just looks like a big tight end. But this is a guy that's 300 pounds. He carries his weight well. He blocks well, has really good feet, and his motor's getting there as well. And you can tell he's starting to get that mean streak as well. So when you have a guy like that on the field as your second tight end, you understand that you're going to pound the rock and do great things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if you couple that and put that on the right side of the line, which I think that's the side of the line that Texas runs extremely well behind. We've been seeing how uh, Campbell has been pancaking folks ever since the Alabama game that the 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 infamous block on number 32 that he gave that had Alabama players just mad for, you know, former players. And this might be the end of the dynasty because they have never been embarrassed like that and not have to and not come back and defend themselves after being embarrassed like that. Texas just came in there and took the cone bread. Now, I love what Texas is doing. I love what Steve Sarkeesian and Cal Florida are doing with moving Agbo over and having him be that, that second tight end. One thing I, I think that I would love to see out of that formation, and I screamed for it a lot last year with Andre Carrick, was every time we had – an extra offensive lineman in the game playing tight end, we automatically knew that that guy was never going to release and catch a ball. I want to see uh, a variation of that to where maybe Agbo gets out there and catches a ball. It'd be outstanding to see that. Almost like Samuel Cosme against West Virginia, what, four or five years ago did. I was at that game, too, at West Virginia. That was pretty interesting and great to see him, him catch that ball for a touchdown from Sam Ellinger. Now, I think that I think that'd be a perfect wrinkle in this game against Oklahoma. But I tell you what, Sark has been playing very vanilla, folks, over these first five games. And and and, and I hope he's been playing very vanilla because we're going to have a lot of stuff that we're going to release here in this game and unleash in this game. And I'll be excited to see what happens. Just like last year, we didn't have to go into our bag too much last year because we had the game one pretty easy and pretty early. Uh, but now let's get to the wide receivers. Last year, the year before last, well, mainly last year, Sark's second year here at the program, we thought we were going to have an outstanding wide receiver core, especially with Isaiah Nayer coming in from Wyoming. And when Nayer gets hurt, everything went out, everything went out the door. Xavier Worthy had to be our option one, two, and three. 
And it's unfair for some of the criticism that we as fans have given Xavier Worthy because he had to be everything for this team in the wide receiver category last year while also sustaining a broken hand that he didn't want to talk about because he's a dog. Dogs don't uh, make excuses, and he didn't make any excuses last year. But this year, getting you know Adonai Mitchell out of the transfer portal from Georgia and coupling him with uh, Xavier Worthy and with Jordan Whittington at the wide receiver position has been outstanding, folks, because now we're seeing Adonai Mitchell be at that boundary, and it's allowed us to have Xavier Worthy kind of line up and do his thing in the field. We've seen him in the slot sometimes. You've seen him uh, motion into the backfield and do great things. I'm telling you, this has opened up our offense so much to have a, a wide receiver opposite of Xavier Worthy and at that boundary who can do great things as well. And we saw exactly what A.D. Mitchell did last week against Kansas. He was our go-to guy last week, over 100 yards receiving. And then having um, Xavier Worthy have a quiet 93 yards. Who would ever thought Xavier Worthy had, would have a quiet 90-something yards, guys? He had a quiet 93 yards here last game. So I think the offense is going to be explosive. I think Sark is and he's going to be in his bag this game. He's going to be in his bag this game. We were very vanilla pretty much this whole season with the exception of the Alabama game. And we saw what we did there. One thing I will say about this offense is we got to start fast. We got to start fast and finish fast too as well. We got to be able to score points often and early and not just rely on our team always being a second half team this year. Now, it's not a bad thing that we are a second half team. But one thing that I, that I miss is being able to get it, get there on a lead, sustain that lead, and continue to put more points on the board in the second half. And that's one thing we have to do. We need to complete four quarters of football this game to win against Oklahoma. Folks on the defensive side of the ball, our defensive line is 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 probably one of the best here in the country. I think it's the best in the conference, um, and I don't even think it's close. We're going to do great things on that line. One thing that Oklahoma is going to do, folks, is get the ball out of that hand quick, out of DG's hand, Dylan Gabriel's hand, because they, do, they don't want any of that smoke on that defensive line. Now, Oklahoma is a run-first team, which a lot of people don't realize that. If Texas can neutralize the run against Oklahoma, we are going to do great things against Oklahoma, and I think we're going to win pretty well in this game because if we can stop that run for Oklahoma and force Dylan Gabriel to be a passer, then we're cooking with hot grease, folks. That's the game plan I want to see is to make them a one-dimensional passing team. Now, in saying that, I, I, I will say this. If they do become a one-dimensional passing team, Texas has to assure that our secondary, our safeties primarily, the ones that are in the game do not get beat deep. That is one knock that I have in this defense so far this year is that we uh, don't have a lot of speed in that in that uh, that uh, safety room right now, and we are getting caught. I wouldn't say we didn't have a lot of speed because there are some guys that that has some speed, but we're getting kept with. We're going to hit with a lot of deep balls over the top, and Oklahoma will feast on that if we allow them if we allow them to do that. Yes, they have athletes there too as well. They got to guy named Brennan Thompson, who a lot of Longhorn fans know who exactly he is, who runs a 10 to 100 meter dash and a guy that caught a ball last week that he probably should have still been running, uh, you know, in that stadium right now. If if Dylan Gabriel gets that ball in front of him, it, it was behind him. He had to readjust and catch the ball. But he was so far behind those safeties against Cincinnati last week that it, it was laughable. So Texas safeties have to be on board to be able to stop whatever deep shots that Oklahoma is is going to po uh, pose. Um, I did like seeing in the second half of last week against Kansas, PK went to uh, a safety um, uh, coupling of Jalen Catalan and Derek Williams, and I thought that was awesome because Jalen Catalan, I'll tell you, he don't mind hitting people, and Derek Williams doesn't mind hitting people either, but both of them are smart guys in that backfield as well and i don't think you're going to see those guys get beat too often so it's going to be very interesting to see the chess matches that coach pk is going to perform on this oklahoma offense now i am i am going to put money that texas is going to win this game however oklahoma is not a slouch folks they have just a, just as good of a shot of winning this game as texas does texas has to stay disciplined especially in the texas secondary they have to stay disciplined if they don't stay disciplined, Oklahoma will get the ball over the top on them. The Texas defensive line has to play sound ball, stop the run, 
and and understand that our defensive line is just physically better than Oklahoma's offensive line. And if we understand that and, and, and continue to press the issue on that, folks, and assure that we handle those trenches, I think we're going to have a really good Saturday. One thing else before I leave, folks. I never thought I'd say this, but the third aspect of, of the game here at Texas has been the special teams. And the special teams has, over the last two weeks, has been a little lackluster. And then, to be honest with you, it's been one of the most um, – it's been one of the most consistent units over these three years here at Texas. We've never had to worry about the special units play. But two weeks ago, we fumbled the ball twice uh, with Worthy and Whittington, two of our most sure-handed guys here in the team at the wide receiver position. They fumbled two punts. And then last week, Bert Auburn misses uh, two, two field goals. So that's two weeks in a row where special teams against a better team, that could have cost us the game. So we have to assure that we clean those mistakes up so that Texas has the opportunity to win against Oklahoma in a convincing fashion. Fashion, I like Texas's chances. I like what we bring to the table. I like our skill position players. I like our trench work. I, I, I love our offensive line. I love our defensive line. I think that's where the game's going to be won. One other thing I want to talk about here, folks, the quarterbacks. I will pick Quinn Ewers over Dylan Gabriel any day of the week. And one thing I do like about Quinn Ewers, he's been sneaky fast this year at running the ball, which a lot of people don't realize how much of an athlete he really is. Dylan Gabriel can run too now, folks. Quinn's arm is stronger than Dylan Gabriel's. And I think Quinn has the better skill position talent to toss the ball around to. And not only that, folks, I think he's going to be protected more. Now, one thing about the Oklahoma defense, and BV does great things here. BV is a, is a mastermind on the defense side of the ball. If you don't believe me, Texas fans, go look at Clemson's defense. Go look at Clemson's defense since BV left and go ask anybody that's at Clemson right now that are Clemson fans if they wish they had BV back on the, you know, as a defensive coordinator there at Clemson. And I guarantee you, nine times out of 10, it's going to be a yes. He has that defense doing great things this year. Now, mind you, they haven't played the level of competition that Texas has played. They played at SMU, they played Cincinnati. Um, I think Cincinnati, who else? Cincinnati, LSU, um, yeah, Iowa State, um, and then two Cincinnati, LSU, SMU, Arkansas State, and I'm missing is it Tulsa, one of them, but they haven't played the best competition here yet. Uh, Texas is going to be their first shot of real competition here for the season. Texas, Texas has had ours already. We've kind of gotten that, gotten that, um, that out of our system and now i think we're going to be ready the nerves will be calmed down but folks if you've never been to the red river rivalry i like to call it the red river shootout because that's what i'm used to saying it's going to be loud it's going to be awesome it's going to be on it's it's, it's going to be outstanding but i want texas to come out and do some great things and beat the crap out of ou folks because i want that stadium to be silent I want it to be silent when Texas has the ball because I want the OU fans to be walking out of there in the third quarter like they did last year. <laughs> oh, man. But hey, folks, let me know what you think about this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'm going to end this video like I end them all. Do you. Don't be afraid to fail. I'll grow your environment. Understand your brilliance. Horns always up. Beat OU. OU sucks. Hook them. <laughs>